In this lesson, we are talking about tension headaches. So we're going to get into what a tension headache is, some of the triggers for having them. We'll also talk about some of the associated signs and symptoms, how it's diagnosed and how it's treated. So tension headaches are also known as tension type headache or TTH and stress headaches. They are a primary muscle related headache disorder involving recurrent episodes of head pain. And we will get into more specific details with regards to this head pain later on in this lesson. Now the exact pathophysiology behind why tension headaches occurs is not entirely understood. It may be due to particular myofascial tender points or it may be due to some autonomic nervous system dysfunction. So it may be due to muscles and muscle related release of particular substances that can cause pain to the individual and it may also be due to autonomic dysfunction. Now, tension headaches are very common. They are actually the most common primary headache disorder. And they are the most common cause of chronic recurring head pain. They are so common that the lifetime prevalence in the general population is upwards of 78%. And the mean age of onset of having tension headaches is between the ages of 15 to 40 years old. Let's talk about risk factors for getting tension type headaches. One risk factor for getting tension type headaches is being female. Females outnumber males with this condition by three to one or three to two. So female patients are more likely to have tension type headaches than male patients. Having depression and anxiety disorders is also another potential risk factor or another associated factor for getting these types of headaches. Insomnia or having difficulties getting to sleep or difficulties staying asleep is also another risk factor as well. Having temporomandibular joint disorder or TMJ disorder is also another potential risk factor. And having particular vitamin deficiencies, especially vitamin B12 and vitamin D deficiencies has been associated with having more tension type headaches. So as we will see, a lot of these risk factors are going to be related to triggers of these types of headaches, which we're going to talk about later on in this lesson. Now let's get into the clinical features of tension type headaches. So because they are a headache, there is going to be head pain. This head pain is going to be a constant pain. It's not going to come and go. When it occurs, it's going to be constant. And it's going to have a gradual onset. It's not going to have a sudden onset like some other types of headaches. It's going to be gradual. And this type of headache is not going to be very severe. It's going to be mild to moderate in intensity. It's going to have particular characteristics, including being non-pulsatile, so Unlike migraine headaches, which are pulsatile or throbbing headaches, the headache in a tension type headache is non-pulsatile. It's described as a pressing or tightening or a fullness type of discomfort or pain, and it may also be described as band-like, a band around the head being pulled or pressed or tightened, or a vice-like pain. The location of this pain is going to be bilateral. It's going to occur on both sides of the head. This is going to differ from cluster headaches and migraine headaches where they are going to be unilateral or one-sided. And more specifically, the location for these types of headaches is going to occur in the frontal area. It can also occur in and around the eyes and in the nuchal occipital area. So in and around the back of the neck and the back of the head. Those can also be areas where this headache can affect as well. When a patient has this particular type of headache, it is going to last between 30 minutes to up to seven days. But the average length of these headaches is going to be between four to six hours. And these headaches may occur at particular times of day in particular patients, with some patients experiencing less headaches in the morning and worse headaches at night or in the evening. And we will discuss why that is here in the next upcoming slides. It's also important to make note of the fact that these headaches are not worse with activity and they may improve with rest. So many times a patient will not want to be active. They will want to rest and that may actually help their headache as well. There are some other findings with regards to these headaches, including difficulty concentrating. Because of the pain and the nuisance from the headache, a patient may have difficulty concentrating. The patient may also experience stiff or tight muscles in the neck, front, and or back of the head. They may also find that the head and the scalp and the neck, if it is touched or pushed on or palpated, it may be tender. And then some patients may describe having a reduced appetite with these headaches as well. 
And then there may be some sensitivity to light or sound, and we're not going to see both of these occurring at the same time like we would see with a migraine headache, and they're not going to be very severe. But some patients may describe having a bit of sensitivity to light with these types of headaches. It's important to make note of, again, that these headaches are different than migraine headaches in that they do not have a prodrome, there is no prodrome involved, and they do not have nausea, vomiting, or aura symptoms. So if you want more information on prodrome and aura symptoms, please check out my full lesson on migraine headaches. Now let's talk about the triggers of these headaches. One trigger that causes these types of headaches is dehydration. So water deprivation or dehydration is known to trigger these types of headaches in many individuals. Hunger is another important trigger for tension type headaches as well. And another big trigger is sleep deprivation. So not getting enough sleep is going to be a trigger in many patients. And this is why we can see these types of headaches occurring more frequently in the evening hours. And we can see these types of headaches occurring in patients who have issues with insomnia. This is the reason why. And sleep deprivation induced tension type headaches may be due to autonomic nervous system dysfunction. So that is something we talked about when we discussed possible pathophysiological mechanisms, and this may be why sleep deprivation triggers tension-type headaches. Some patients may have these headaches after being exposed to certain sounds, and anxiety and stress is a big trigger for these types of headaches as well, and that's why we talked about having anxiety disorders being a risk factor or an associated factor with these headaches. And then depression. Depression is also another trigger for these types of headaches. And that, again, is why we see depression being a risk factor for having tension type headaches. And then having poor posture. And this is in line with muscle related issues in tension type headaches. And poor posture, especially excessive neck flexion that can occur from bending over and using a computer too often or the way someone's positioned when watching television. All of these things may all lead to or increase the risk of having tension type headaches as well. And then tension type headaches can be broken down into particular types, which are important to recognize as well. One is known as episodic tension type headache, and another one is chronic tension type headache. And episodic tension type headache is further broken down into frequent and infrequent. Frequent is when there is at least 10 headaches that occur on 1 to 14 days per month on average for over 3 months. Whereas infrequent is when there is at least 10 headaches, where headaches occur on less than one day per month on average, and overall there are less than 12 headaches per year. That would be considered infrequent. And then due to some pathophysiological mechanisms, which we won't talk about here, but in some patients there can be what is known as central sensitization. And it appears that in some patients this central sensitization can lead them into having chronic tension type headache. And chronic tension type headache is when there is a headache on at least 15 days per month for over three months. And this type of tension type headache may be more associated with vitamin deficiencies. So having a vitamin B12 deficiency, having a vitamin D deficiency, these all may be related to having chronic tension type headache more so than episodic tension type headache. So how do clinicians diagnose tension type headache? The diagnosis of tension type headache is a clinical diagnosis, so it's going to be determined by what we've talked about in the last several slides. So according to the International Headache Society, or IHS, the clinical diagnosis for tension type headache requires at least two of the following four. So the headache itself has to be bilateral, non-pulsatile, pressing, tightening pain, mild to moderate in severity, and not worse with exertion. So at least two of the four of these particular characteristics. And then there has to be no nausea or vomiting, which would be more specific to other types of headache, including migraine headache. And there is not both photo or phonophobia, so not both light and sound sensitivity. And to complete the diagnosis, there has to be at least 10 of these headache episodes that occur for at least 30 minutes to upwards of seven days. When making the diagnosis, it's also important to exclude other possible causes. So a lot of what we've discussed helps to exclude some other possible causes. And then it's also important to image to rule out other causes, especially if there are red flag signs and symptoms. Some of those red flag signs and symptoms I'll mention here can be remembered by the mnemonic SNOOP4, and four meaning that there are four Ps, and we'll go through each one here. So if there are these SNOOP4 or these 
particular red flag signs and symptoms, it's important to look out for other potential causes and imaging may be required in those particular cases. So from the mnemonic SNOOP4, S is for systemic symptoms. Systemic symptoms can be fatigue or fever or some other finding. N is for neurologic symptoms and more specifically, maybe a focal neurologic deficit. O is for onset after age 50. The other O is for a sudden onset. We talked about tension type headaches having a gradual onset, but if there's a sudden onset and that pain is very severe, it's a thunderclap headache, that would be concerning for a subarachnoid hemorrhage, for instance. So there are other potential diagnoses that can be uncovered if there are some of these other red flag symptoms. And then with regards to the P's, these are papilledema, which would be noted on ophthalmoscopy. If the pain or the headache is positional, that may also be another red flag. If the headache is precipitated by a Valsalva maneuver, and if the headache is progressive, so progressive meaning that it's getting worse and worse over time or it's changing in its characteristic. So those are going to be some red flag signs and symptoms that are important to look out for, and they may indicate another potential diagnosis diagnosis that should be looked for. Now, how do clinicians treat tension type headaches? It's important to identify and avoid triggers. We talked about those triggers before, dehydration, hunger, stress, sleep deprivation. All of those are going to be important to identify for particular patients and to avoid. Even without treatment, these types of headaches are self-limiting, which means they will go away or resolve on their own. Rest is helpful for symptoms though, so this is going to be important even without treatment. With regards to breaking the treatment down, more specifically, if a patient has episodic tension type headache, they can treat the headache with NSAIDs. So NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen or naproxen can be used. Some patients may use acetaminophen or Tylenol to help with the pain as well. And then caffeine. Caffeine can be used to actually help reduce some of the pain from a tension type headache. With regards to patients who have chronic tension type headaches, these patients can be treated with a tricyclic antidepressant like amitriptyline. So amitriptyline has been shown to help reduce the episodes of tension type headache. And then for some patients, they can also undergo cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT, which can help reduce some of their stress levels and depressive symptoms, which are known to trigger tension type headaches as well. So cognitive behavioral therapy can be important too. So again, these are some of the treatments that can be used for tension type headache. If you want more information on other types of headaches, please check out my lessons on those topics. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.